humble wireless say, one of my first ever memories was lying in bed, listening under my bed covers to a ghetto blaster. It was the 90s, okay? Uh, tuned in to John Peel on the BBC. The sounds were so weird and wonderful. I'd never heard anything like it. It just took my breath away. Was I even listening to songs? This certainly didn't sound like the Spice Girls. But what I was listening to was more than music. It was ideas, it was alternative culture, but I was part of it. Here I was, listening. He was speaking to me, and I trusted him. And it got me thinking, if just music out there in the big, wide world could be so different to what I was used to in my everyday life, then what else could be different? What kind of people could I meet? What kind of things could I go out and, and see and feel and experience? And I thought, wow, if everyone could listen to that, it would change the world. Now, fast forward 10 years, and I'm not in that little cottage in Surrey anymore. I'm in Egypt, just after the Murbarak demonstrations, which saw Cairo turn from one of the biggest tourist destinations in the world into a war zone. Tanks rolled down the street, there was mass hysteria and violence, and it was a really frightening time. It was part of the Arab Spring, which basically saw the people of Egypt rise up against their president in the name of free democratic elections. Now, I was there to uh, spread a little light relief. <laughs> I brought a load of DJs from Rinse FM in London to collaborate with MCs from 100 Copies label in Cairo to make a track. Now, Rinse FM, right? It's, uh, it's all about grime music. So grime, it started in Hackney and in Tower Hamlets, and it's pacey, you know, it's street music. It's quite rhythmical and fast, and the equivalent of that in Egypt is shabby, which literally translates as music of the people. It too is pacey and quite cutting on the ear. And lyrically, they do not shy away from controversial subject matter. They rap quite crassly about politics and male and female gender roles and feelings of, of restlessness in a post-revolution society. So it's a really exciting medium and bringing quite a topical discussion into an open forum for debate. <clears throat> And shabby parties, they are something else. I went to my uh, first one earlier this year when I went back to Cairo to DJ Decaf Festival. They are wild, thousands of people crammed into narrow streets, just going crazy, um, throwing each other in the air, dancing quite aggressively, letting off fireworks, like letting off tension, just having the time of their lives, pounding their chests and roaring like lions. It's really exciting. And shabby artists, they're like rock stars in Cairo. Everyone knows who they are and wants a piece. But, and this is the crux for me, how has this gritty underground, like music of the street, got national popularity in Egypt? How are Egyptian grannies down with shabby? That's like saying my nana loves Dizzy Rascal, right? Through pirate radio simple. The military government that is normally so strict about censoring official media outlets in Egypt just overlooks, you know, the scruffy makeshift radio stations. They let them get on with it. Radio is a perfect platform for the underdogs, the shabby artists, to express themselves. It's cheap, it's less moderated, it's easy to make, it's accessible. And now, shabby music through radio is a real driving force for hardcore social change in Egypt amongst an entire generation of people. So I'm going to continue our adventure, uh, telling you a little bit more about my life. We're traveling down the continent now, so from Egypt all the way down to, uh, to southern Africa. Now, radio is really thriving in southern Africa. It's a really strong force. During the apartheid in South Africa, uh, community radio was essential. It was a way for minority voices to really be heard. And often, it was the only form of official media that many communities could genuinely trust. 
that represented their voice. Pirate Radio is still going from strength to strength there, especially in the poverty-stricken townships of Cape Town and Johannesburg. When I went back to uh, DJ uh, Cape Town Electronic Music Festival last year, it was, it was so humbling to witness a group of aspiring DJs, about 25 of them, huddled around this one really dusty, clunky, old, outdated PC computer just to make beats in nothing more but like a tin shack. That thirst, that need to create music, to express your truth above everything else and to share it with your community on the radio, that is what creativity is for me. Now moving from South Africa just slightly up to Malawi, a phenomenal country, so beautiful, lovely, warm people. I'm a uh, spokesperson for Lake of Stars Festival out there, absolutely love it. But it is one of the poorest countries in the world and the HIV rate is sky high. But radio is a really practical tool there, making real tangible change. It's female presenters speaking to female listeners en masse on the radio in essentially a safe and anonymous environment, really educating people about se sexual health, challenging really strong cultural norms in Malawi that's having tangible change with real results. It's phenomenal to witness. Now, we are going now from Malawi uh, all the way through to our final country that I'm gonna talk about today uh, in, in the Middle East. So, in 2013, I visited Zatri, which is the world's largest Syrian refugee camp in the north of Jordan. I was there to make a radio documentary about what life was like growing up as a refugee with Oxfam. It is a desolate place. It is stark and barren, and in the summer, huge dust storms blow through the camp, just covering and coating everything. It gets in your skin, gets in your hair. In the winter, the ground just turns into a solid sheet of ice. And it is on this ice that 130,000 people camp, often in tents, of all different ages and abilities, sometimes days after giving birth. Now, what really struck me, I just couldn't believe it. This was, what a way to live, eh? The, uh, the locals say only the devil lives in Zatari because it's considered so un unlivable. And the mood, well, it's a transitional place. It's neither here nor there. It's very frustrating, just people waiting and waiting to go home, like a holding pen for people. But what really struck me, you know, what can I do? What impact can I make? This DJ from London who's come to solve the refugee crisis. Well, evidently, I didn't do that, especially based on what's going on in Europe right now, but hopefully I did raise some awareness of camp conditions uh, back in the UK and in turn raise money for Oxfam and the brilliant work they do there. But what really struck me was how much this camp desperately needed a central communication network. UNHCR would employ refugees to act a bit like town criers with megaphones literally crying the news on each street corner, like medieval times. Uh, this resulted in huge amounts of miscommunication, basically because of Chinese whispers. With so many of the refugees being illiterate, how amazing would it be to have a community radio station on site in the camp run by refugees for refugees? You could have uh, lessons on the radio, mosque prayers, public health warnings, official messages from center camp, actual real news of what's going on in Syria, weather warnings. Through music therapy and radio drama, you could create shows that were really catered to the very specific and niche needs of that community. I really think it would help give people back control over their future to feel empowered, to feel that they have some control of what's going on in their lives. Now, this isn't just about Zatri, it's about the multitude of refugee camps that are popping up all over the Middle East and Europe. No project like this currently exists, but I want to start one, and I need your help. So, a week before I entered into the camp, 
the Jordanian army was sent into a primary school with tear gas because the children had started stoning their teacher. Tear gas on seven-year-olds. It's hard to comprehend, isn't it? These children have seen such horrific things, murder, rape, torture, mass destruction. They now have no uh, discipline, no routine, no structure, and they've got no way of processing this fear and this anger. And this is the generation that is going to have to rebuild Syria when the war is over. It is our duty to help these people. It is our humanitarian duty to help. And I truly think radio could be such an efficient tool in helping educate, psychologically treat, and comfort the community. So, I hope I uh, maybe have changed your mind about old wireless here. <laughs> that maybe you don't think radio is such an old, boring, outdated medium. You can really see the power it has to change people's lives and the world around them. From the student in Cairo listening to 100 Copies FM and thinking, yeah, that music speaks to me. I want to make a stand for democracy. I'm going to do something about that. To the woman in rural Malawi thinking, wow, I feel educated and empowered and brave enough to ask my partner to practice safe sex to avoid HIV. These are real people with real stories. Okay, and I want you guys to take action too. Support your local radio project. Listen, engage in it, share. Just be part of that conversation. Be involved. There are phenomenal resources here in London. Represent Radio, literally just over there in Brixton. Roundhouse Radio, Sound Women, the National Prison Radio Network, the Student Radio Association. Support them, support these projects. And on a global scale, well, I guess this is my call to arms to try and make this refugee radio project happen. I've coined it Hope Radio, and I need your help. Okay, we need wind-up radios, or the resources to buy them. We need presenters and producers, technicians, engineers, who can come and set up these stations and train people to run them for themselves and to make programs that are genuinely gonna benefit people. We need technical equipment. Old, outdated stuff is fine, as long as it works. This is really easy, achievable stuff. It just involves people power. So, I see, fundamentally, my job as helping people feel. To reconnect to emotions that maybe have been, I don't know, wound down by our manic society that we live in. Letting music, letting radio genuinely touch you. So that is what I'm asking for you to do today. Let yourself be genuinely moved and take action as a result. But most importantly, when people express themselves authentically on the radio or otherwise, listen. <laughs> Thank you.